We are all hungry people. We need shelter and strength. We are one in our hurting. We are one in our pain. In our suffering and sadness, we are saved by the grace of the power and the spirit that is here in this place. We are gathered at table as one in the Lord. We are gathered as people who are living the word. Our hearts and our spirits are nurtured by grace. It is Jesus who fills us. He is here in this place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends, in this 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Jesus teaches us through the gospel, through the story of his disciple, especially Peter, who reached out to Jesus and asked him to save him. His prayer was to be saved because he was sinking. It helps us reflect on our own ways of praying, our own sincere desire to pray. Friends, for the times that we have failed to sincerely pray to the Lord, we ask him to pardon us for our transgressions. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory, glory to God in the highest. to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, glory. Glory to God in the highest, glory, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill, amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
a reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to God. up your name, praise to my King and God, for you are holy, oh, I will lift up your name, praise to my King and my God on high. I will lift up your name, praise to my King and God, for you are holy, oh, I will lift up your name, Praise to my King and my God on high. Always faithful, kind and gentle, slow to anger, filled with love. Oh, how great is the Lord above. I will lift up your name. Praise to my King and God for you are holy, oh, I will lift up your name, praise to my King and my God on high. I will lift up your name, praise to my King and my God on high. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. Theirs the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. Theirs the patriarchs, and from them according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and proceed him into the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after doing so, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. And at once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened and beginning to sink, and he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hands and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sorry about the sound. There was a story about three men. One was Catholic, one was a Protestant, and one was a Muslim. And these, these three men, they were debating about the best positions of prayer. The first came, the Catholic, and he said, we have the best position of prayer, and that is kneeling. When you kneel, you show your reverence to God. But the Protestant said, no, the best position of prayer is when you're standing up with your arms outstretched, offering words of praise, songs of praise, worshiping God. But the Muslim said, no, that is not the best position of prayer. The best position of prayer for us Muslims is when you bend down your body all the way to the ground with your head touching the floor. That is when you show your ultimate worship of God. But they didn't realize that behind them was an electrician. He overheard the conversation, and the electrician said, guys, those positions of prayer are nothing. The most important position of prayer that I've done was when I was up on an electric post hanging upside down with the live wire right above me. Friends, indeed, who can't, you know, who cannot pray in that kind of situation. Friends, in our gospel reading today, we have heard Peter, who was pleading the Lord, Lord, save me. He was seriously praying because he was sinking. He was fighting for his life. You know, that prayer was a very serious prayer intended for the Lord to save him, to save his life. How many times in our life did we pray 
Every day we try to pray, but we ask ourselves, do we have that same intention, sincerity, and dedication in our prayer? Do we really mean what we say when we pray? In our life, every day we have words that we express to others. But the question is, do we also mean what we say? For instance, we say, see you later. Do we really mean that we will see them later? The later might mean next week or in a few months or next year or even never. Worse is when we say sorry and we really don't mean what we say. There's no sincerity in, what, in that word that we say sorry. It only becomes an expression. Or even worse, when we use God's name in vain. How many times in our lives did we say, oh my God, right? We are all guilty about this. A lot of our young people would even use that in text, OMG, right? We are, in doing so, we are violating the second commandment, using God's name not for his glory, but, you know, for an expression or just because we want to say something, right? So, friends, this is a lesson for us. The way Peter prayed today, Lord, save me with all its intent and purposes. When we pray, do we also mean what we say? When we pray the Our Father, for instance, how many times did we pray it simply casually? Do we really mean what we say when we pray the Our Father? One saint by the name of St. Edmund once said, it is better to pray one Our Father fervently and devoutly than to, to pray thousands of Our Father with full of distraction and with no sincerity. So the lesson for us today is our desire to sincerely pray and even giving time to pray. In our busy lives prior to this pandemic, how many times did we pray? Did we put five, ten minutes, an hour to set aside for time of prayer. During this time of pandemic, when we have time in our hands, did we start our day reflecting upon the readings of the day, praying the rosary, or simply having that conversation with God as we have conversation with our friends to nourish our lives? We should also remember we should nourish our spiritual lives with our communion with God. Our catechism teaches us that prayer is our way of communing with God because he is our God. St. John Vianney would say, prayer is our union with God. And definitely, without prayer, there can be no communion with God. But probably fundamentally, we should ask ourselves first, how can we pray when we are all distracted, when we have all the noises in our lives, just as the disciples when they were on the boat, they were, they were being tossed by the waves and the noise of the ocean. They were so distracted. That is also the question for each and every one of us. How can we pray if there's a lot of noises around us? Definitely, we should find a way to be in silence. Silence is a key to find time to pray. We saw that in Jesus. Jesus who even in his busy schedule, it is shameful for us to know Jesus' story, knowing that amidst his busy schedule, he found time to pray. In fact, in the beginning of the gospel today, instead of resting because he spent grueling days of, you know, turning loaves and fish into multiple thousands of uh, food to feed thousands of people, he had long, grueling day of healing the sick, curing the sick. But at the end of the day, beginning of the gospel today, he requested to be alone on the mountain to spend time in prayer. And he spent six hours to pray on top of the mountain. Right? He came back at three in the morning and he was back on the scene with his disciples. If Jesus can find time to pray, he is our model of prayer. We can also find time to pray. And so, friends, this is the desire for each and every one of us through the gospel lesson today. Our desire to pray is to find time in silence to pray. That is also the story of Elijah in our first reading today. 
Elijah went up the mountain, Mount Oreb or Mount Sinai. He was there. He was at the entrance of the cave, and he was waiting for God to appear in silence. First, there came a hurricane of wind, but he knows that God is not there in that wind, in that noise. Afterwards, there came an earthquake with all the noises and destruction, but he knows that God was not there. And a blazing fire came. Again, he knows that God is not there because God is a God of peace. And finally, a very soft wind, whispering wind, soothing breeze came, and he tried to cover himself with cloak because he feels that he's not worthy to even see God face to face. And there in the soft, silent breeze, God appeared to Elijah. That is also true with us. If we find ourselves in silence and look into the innermost chamber of our hearts and soul, there God is present. God is present. Friends, one account of the gospel says, if we desire to pray, if we wish to encounter God, no, close your room, close your windows and doors, and there God will be with you. That is also true in our lives. We can find time to pray. When we set the mood, we find a place where we can be in silence and offer to God our prayers, our intentions, and our petitions. In this Holy Mass, let us pray that God will inspire us, will send us the Holy Spirit to offer gifts of prayer to God and to really, to really find time to pray amidst all the noises that we have around us. One study says that every person would encounter at least 2,000 ads during the day, you know, watching television, you know, online, newspapers, and the radio. We are all bombarded with, with all the noises, music, even news, and sometimes most of the things that we see in social, social media are deception. That is why when we find time in silence, we can discern what is right and what is wrong. And what more if we pray? God will give us that power to discern what is right from what is wrong. And so, dear friends, as we continue with this Holy Mass, let us ask the Lord to inspire in us that desire to pray, to pray the desire to find time to pray in silence so that we can encounter God. I encountered this catchy phrase from Facebook that says, and I think it will help us a lot, right? And it says, God does not have an Apple iPhone, but he is my favorite contact. God does not have Twitter, but I follow him. God does not have internet, but I remain connected to him. And maybe in our time today, we can say God does not have TikTok, where you can only view for 15 seconds. But God, if we desire to pray to him, it's unlimited. We can pray to him every day, every single day of our lives until eternity. That is the desire that God wants to show us, that he wants to commune with us. What about our desire? Are we willing to commune with him? And to end, I'd like to end with a phrase, a quote that says, prayer is not simply a spare wheel where we can take out in, in times of trouble, but prayer is a steering wheel that can steer us to the right direction in our life. May the Lord be our steering wheel, and when we pray, he will definitely steer our lives to the right directions. Let us find time to pray. Let us find time to be in silence. Amen. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Bringing our petitions and intentions to God, let us now offer to Him our prayers. For all ministers of our church who are wrestling with doubt, loneliness, or fear, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government officials who look after themselves before responding to the will of their people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in our world who, like Elijah, are struggling to hear God's voice and are discerning his will for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who earn a living by fishing the seas and who are, at times, put in situations of great danger. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's people, that our Lord may strip away our pride, suspicion, and racism, so that we may seek peace and justice in our communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those celebrating the gift of sacramental marriage, especially for Craig and Mary Van Kulen on their 40th wedding anniversary, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who are ill, that they will be restored to health. Today, we especially pray for Veronica Resendez, Nancy Buchanan, Luis Vaca, Steve Herrera, and Rich Caputo. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who have died, that they may be raised to life on high. Today, we especially pray for Mark Harrison, Peyton Ballinger, Treasure Dillard, and Maxine Cumming. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, these are our petitions. We offer them to you in humility, and we ask you to grant them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Save you as our King 
and whether our tomorrows be filled with good or ill we'll triumph through our sorrows and rise to bless you still to marvel at your beauty and glory in your ways and make a joyful duty our sacrifice of praise Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the, the praise and glory of his name, for our, our good, good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right Amen. and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of the mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs, and in one chorus of exultant praise, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of all, Full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At that time, he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate, the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray 
that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Oscar, our Bishop, Patrick, our Emeritus Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Catherine, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom. the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer to one another the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold Jesus Christ, he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. We are blessed to be called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
and he came though he might have lied. For he tells us, when you eat my body and you drink my blood, I will live in you and you will live in my love. When you eat my body and you drink my blood, I will live in you and you will live in my love. We are one body, one body in Christ, and we do not stand alone. We are one body, one body in Christ, and he came though he might have lied. For he tells us, can you hear them crying? Can you feel their pain? Will you feed my hungry? Will you help my lame? See the unborn baby, the forgotten one. They are not forsaken, they are not unloved. We are one body, one body in Christ. And we do not stand alone. We are one body, one body in Christ. And he came that we might have life. We are one body, one body in Christ, and we do not stand alone. We are one body, one body in Christ, and he came that we might have life. We are one body, one body in Christ. And we do not stand alone. We are one body, one body in Christ. And he came though he might have Let us now pray the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm in us the light of your truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, before we conclude our Mass, I would like to offer a special prayer of blessings to our parishioners who are celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary, Craig and Mary Van Kulen. They're tuning in today, and I'd like to invite you also to pray with me and offer a special blessing for them by raising your right hands virtually. Almighty and eternal God, you have so exalted the unbreakable bond of marriage that it has become the sacramental sign of your son's union with the church as his spouse. Look with favor on Craig and Mary, whom you have united in marriage 40 years ago as they ask for your help and the protection of the Virgin Mary. They pray that in good times and in bad, they will grow in love for each other that they will resolve to be of one heart in the bond of peace. Lord, in their struggles, let them rejoice that you are near to help them. In their needs, let them know that you are there to rescue them. And in their joys, let them see that you are the source 
and completion of every happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us give Craig and Mary a huge round of applause. Woo! Congratulations. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Holy Mass has been offered. Let us go in God's peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Have a blessed Sunday. Blessed are the poor in spirit, longing for their Lord. For God's coming kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are the sorrowing, for they shall be consoled. And the meek shall come to rule the world.